I have to do this longer. In response to Kevin's question, you invoked the miracle on ice. So I'm, <laughs> yes. I'm wondering, when you're maybe not when you're in front of cameras yeah. with people, and you're home alone, and you think about the chances you have of unseating an incumbent president, mm -hmm. do you actually think it will take a miracle to elect you president? No, take, no. In fact, not at all. It takes people who want to preserve, protect, promote democracy. It takes people who are really sick and tired of this nonsense. And it just takes people doing the most res biggest responsibility, the most important obligation in a free country like ours to just go vote. And, you know, I have to say, there's not much that Donald Trump represents that I liked. But I'll tell you, he got people to come out and vote. And I'm not saying that will be his only legacy, but I will be honest, I think there's something really important about someone who at least gets people who believe that they don't matter, that no one cares, that all is lost, to get out and actually exer exercise, by the way, and I mean this intentionally, exercise democracy, exercise their rights. The fact that this great country has such low turnout in primaries is appalling and it's embarrassing and it's really dangerous. So I'll answer your question. No, it doesn't take a miracle. It just takes a majority of people like me I would call us the exhausted majority, to come out and vote. And by the way, <clears throat> if you're an independent, you're a Republican, give me a chance. You might, see, you might be really surprised that if you give this a chance, you give this campaign, you see the kind of people that I would populate uh, that cabinet with, when you see my relationships with my Republican colleagues, uh, when you see how I conduct myself, both in my private and in my public life, when you see what is possible by simply objecting to the status quo, you'll see me say today, shortly, that it's time for us to declare independence again from this nauseating, disgusting, repulsive, and disenfranchising system that our founders, including some from this very state, uh, would have been appalled by. And that is who I am, and that's why I would seek and ask and invite anybody who feels the same to reconsider their obligations politically and maybe consider their obligations to our country. Well, Congressman, on the ballot, yes, just briefly, yeah. is it a mistake that Joe Biden isn't on the ballot here in New Hampshire, and does it play to your advantage that he isn't? It's a question that's being asked a lot. I, I, that's, that's a question he should be asked. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know the answer. I, I won't know how New Hampshire folks feel until I start today, mm -hmm. and I'm going to be all around, <laughs> and people, I'm going to hear how they feel, and I can't wait. Um, it's disappointing. Mm -hmm because I believe in this tradition, uh, but that's a question you'll have to ask him, and I guess the voters in New Hampshire, not I guess, I know. <laughs> if nothing else, I'm giving you the choice, and I'm giving you the freedom, and I'm giving you the opportunity to register how you feel about what has been done, not just as it relates to the primary, but what has been done to our country, and whether or not you're ready for change. Mm -hmm. yep. Thank you.